Hi, I'm Chris from LearnGrasshopper.com and today I have something really special, demo lesson about data trees. This lesson is part of the Grasshopper Fundamentals training. In this video, I will show you how to create data trees manually by using some special tricks. Next, I will present the four groups of components that create data trees automatically. 90% of Grasshopper users don't know that each of these groups works differently and does not follow the process of data tree creation. This is one of the biggest mistakes made by Grasshopper advanced user. I will show you how to avoid it. After this lesson, your understanding of data trees will be better and it will help you to solve complex problems. Below this video, you can find a link to this presentation in the PDF format and Grasshopper exercises for this particular lesson. So after watching it, it can test your knowledge in practice in Grasshopper. This PDF and exercises are for free and you can get them without giving any emails. This lesson is one of the middle of lessons from my comprehensive Grasshopper training, where I'm taking a Grasshopper with zero programming experience and going step by step through 13 well-structured modules with more than 300 practical exercises. This training is one of the first steps to becoming an engineer 4.0 with skills that allow automating of time-consuming work a taking design to the next level. Worth to mention that advanced users will learn a lot from this training as well. On grasshopperfundamentals.com, you can sign up for the next edition of this online training and reserve your seat. You will land on my mailing list, which already consists of more than 600 engineers, and I will let you know where the next edition starts and come up with the best offer. Now, let's go to the lesson. So let's start how we can create our data tree manually. First uh, way of doing that is uh, through a set, set multiple numbers or manage point collection. If you remember from previous videos, we have created lists through that. And in addition, here you have a add path. Here on the right, on the right side, you can see, click here to add a new path to end of this list. Here in this button, you can create a new data tree structure. The same we can do with uh, set multiple numbers, but instead of clicking a button, we are writing double dots and we are opening curly brackets and writing a path name, path number, and we are ending that curly brackets. And now every, every number put after that, um, that symbol will be placed in this data tree. So let's go to a practical example how it looks like in Grasshopper. I have my Grasshopper file with lectures already open. Here we can just open this first. We have a points. We have nine points when you see with panel. So there is a just one list with nine points. If we use param viewer, uh, let me see param viewer here you will see that there is a double click on that, so it will change to the graphical form. So you will see that there is a just one data tree. Let's create from this, let's divide maybe for maybe three uh, uh, branches. So if we right click on that one, and if we go to manage point collection, you will see point persistent data. And here you will see that we have just only one data. Let's add some new one. So if we have no add number one, so actually we can just drag and drop and place it by some number. So let's say that we would like to create two new branches. And of course, you can change the branches if you get a zero semicolon zero or so on. But let's stay to the really simple structure here. So we added three branches. Let's, let's confirm with that. So you will see that we have changed that first of all, this wire change to the dashed form so we know that this is a data tree several lists in the in the one list in the data tree so you will see that the graphic you will see that there is a three branches and our items is laying on the last one the same you will see that here we have a panel that's showing three lists with all uh, with all elements so remember right click manage point collection with the pluses here, we can add the path so we can renumerate and change the uh, path. The next one is when we have 
our data if uh, in the number. If when here we talk about points, if we have a numbers, so if we go to manage generic data, so we can create the same in the same way. Here is a zero uh, semicolon free, but there is also another way. If we go to set multiple data items here, so you will see that you have this uh, blank field, so you can just copy the data and create a data tree by this symbol. So it's a double dot. Uh, open uh, curly brackets and try the name of a data tree path and close it. So let's create a new one. So let's say that this will be a zero semicolon zero and this will be zero semicolon one and change the data maybe with 20, 21 and 22. So after we connect that, so let's copy that panel and control C, control V. Let's copy and see how it looks like. So again, in a really easy way, we have created the data which we would like to have. So you will see in the param viewer two, two branches and here is our data tree structure. So this was the first way of doing that if they manage point collection or if we go to set multiple data item. Second method of creating manually creating data tree is uh, using Antwine component. Antwine component combines a collection of data streams and creates data tree. So it's working kind of the same as a merge, if you remember, when you've been merging a list. But now we are not merging into one list, but here we are creating separate data tree structures. So here we can add with the pluses, there is a zoomable usable inf interface, so we can just add or uh, add more uh, data tree structures and make it graphed or, or flatten. Let's go through examples how this data tree can be structured. Here on this example, you will see that we have three lists, one, two, three, four, four elements in the first one, three elements in the second one, and two elements in the last one. All of them are placed in the zero path, path, uh, path name zero. So everything has the same path. So if we are going to merge them, so for example, if we are going to use the merge, so you will see that if we merge all of them, so all of them will land in the same data tree structure. So for example, if we connect that, so you will see that if we merge, they will be all placed in the one list. In the Antwine, in the difference, it will create three different lists with the names of the paths that are specified actually here. So here you can just with the adding, so you will see that we are going to add zero semicolon three. And you will see that if we click clicked add, so this one was created already, but there is no data at all. So let's create create a panel with the number 10. And if we connect that, so it will be placed in this branch. So really useful when we are going to connect lots of uh, lots of data. When you right click on that one, you will see that you can flatten input and make it graphed. Here is a difference. You will see that the one that was previously before as a second path now is the first one. So this is the what graft function already is doing. You will see also here that it will uh, it will uh, also keep the structure of this uh, of this paths. So for example, here everyone was zero, so it will place all the zeros first, and afterwards will create a new one. If we are making a flat input, so actually it's starting with that with this one. So let's go, let's go to another example just so to show you. So here we have uh, some inputs that place in the zero semicolon three. Let's say, let's check what is the other one, one semicolon three, and the third one, two semicolon three. So for example, if we are going to use antwine component with the flatten function, so actually it doesn't matter which and uh, which uh, objects, which, which path it's contained. So let's connect that. So you will see 
the difference. So let's connect all this free, uh, all this free uh, data, and we will see the results. So what this component is doing, so actually it doesn't matter what kind of data is here because it's going to make a flat. Flat is going to make to the, to the lowest possible structure. So in this case, it will be zero. So that's why it will be zero, one, and two. So it doesn't matter which branches it has. But if we're going to make a, a uncheck this flatten input, so you will see that we are going to preserve the data tree structure, what was before, so zero free, okay? So what was zero free, but we connected to the extra data le level. So it will be zero. The next one, it will be one, and it's going to be, it's going to take the first one here from the our entwine, and it's going to preserve the same data tree structure. So one semicolon, one semicolon three, and of course two here, and it will be two semicolon two semicolon three. If we are going to add new one, new branch, and we connect the same data, so you will see that it will create a new data tree structure with a tree at the beginning with the same data. So remember, Antwine is really useful. We are going to use a lot of this component in our exercises. And now we are going to the third uh, way of creating a manually data tree structure which is using PathMapper, using PathMapper or Flatten Tree. So PathMapper, we are going to talk about more about this one. This is a special one, but here you can um, perform some logical mappings between data paths, and here you can create your manual. And another component is a Flatten Tree. So actually, again, Flatten is going to the lowest possible level, but here there is also like a path that we can assign this uh, particular path to this data. So let's look at this example. Here we have a data, so let's use our uh, path mapper. Let me see, path mapper. Here is our, there is no data here. So if we connect our uh, data, so you will see if you right click, you can create something which is called create null mapping. So you will see that there is, will be nothing created. So it's going from the A, which stands for this path and create the same. So if we are going to check the results, so it will be actually everything, everything the same. So let's go to map mapping editor and we can change this data. So instead of A, which is variable in our case, so let's say, let's say that we are going to create that in the, uh, the data tree, which is number five. And you will see that we have created a new data. Let's change maybe font a little bit, a little bit bigger, just everyone will see here. So we have created the same data, it's a two, but it's placed in the path mapper, thanks to path mapper in the data tree path equal five. The same we can do with the button tree. So actually we are going to flatten this data. Let's copy that one. So you will see that it's a place in the zero. So you will see that if there is also, we, we connect this is from the five that is placed on the branch number five. So it will create again to the lowest, it in, in this case will be zero. But we can also not give to the lowest level. Here is a zero as a, you will see that there is a zero as a, a input, but let's connect that and let's create the same the same num path number five. So if we have the setup path, if we're going to change the five and commit changes, so you will see that it's the same. So in this way, we, we are not transforming our data like number two, but we are just giving a new path. So this is a free method of creating a, a data tree manually. Let's go how we can create data tree automatically thanks to Grasshopper. As you know, there's plenty of components in Grasshopper and they are working in different ways in order to create data tree structure. So let's go through these four types. So first one is a item to item. So in this example, for example, you remember construct plane. And if we go to the input, so you will see that we need a point. You will see this hexagonal uh, point symbol that is presented in the form of uh, a free coordinates. Next, we have a, 
x axis in the direction of a plane and y axis direction of a plane. So in this case, when we have a point and two uh, vectors, so we can create our plane. And this is our result. So we call it from one item, we are getting one item as a result. So here is a example. When we have a point uh, defin defined in the zero, zero, zero in our origin, and if we are going to define our axis, a unit vector in the x and y in the y axis, so actually we are going to get a word x and y. Really simple, uh, simple thing. But if we are going to give uh, to our component more data, so for example, five origins, five x axis and five y axis. So actually we are go going to get five inputs based on that. So we are taking the first origin, first x axis and first y axis and we are creating our plane. And we're going to next one and next one. So that's why that's why we are saying there is the item to item. So always when you're giving one item, so we are create one uh, one number of items, we are creating one plane. So in this case, we have created several uh, five uh, five planes. Next one, next type of components are is when you have a list uh, as an input, and we are going to give one just one input. So for example, uh, as I showed you before in the mathematical module, here is a mass addition, uh, mass addition component. So as the left side, we have the input values for a mass addition. And as a result, you have a, for example, result of this, uh, uh, this like a summary of this all this uh, numbers. So let's go through the example. So in this case, we have data tree structure. So we have three lists. So it's a first list, one, two, three, four, and the second, five, six, seven, and the last one, eight, nine. When we are connecting inputs to mass addition, so you will see that actually from one, uh, from first, so we are taking the first list, so zero semicolon zero. So not, that's why we are taking that one, uh, that one to, the, uh, to our results and we are making our sum. So one plus two plus three plus four, it gives 10. So we are keeping the same data tree structure. The same if would be if we're going to the next one, so it will be zero semicolon one. Uh, so we are keeping the same data and we are adding five, six and seven, which result in 18. And we are going to the zero semicolon two. So we are going to keep the same data, eight plus nine, of course, 17. So this is how the component list to item works. Another way, and now we are going to uh, create some data trees. So it's a component that we have a one item and we are creating lists of items. So let's do the component that you already know and it's a serious component. One of the component that you, uh, I, I showed you as the first one. So here we have a count as a zero, step as a one, and count as a five. And you will, if you are hover over the results of a series, so you will see that this is a number, this hexagonal icon with number and series as a list. And here is a key. Every time when we are going to check the output, so here will be stands. Is a list or is a tr data tree? So in this way, we can see which component generate lists and data trees. So for example, we are starting from zero, step one and count five. So that's why we have generated zero, one, two, three, four. So you will see the difference. Again, we have just single uh, items, single inputs in the left side, but we are gener generating a list. So this is the, uh, this is the principle. So we are taking all these zeros as a first. Okay, so this is our zeros as the input, but we are generating new data lists. So that's why in this case, we are taking indices, in this case, zero, 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 and we are taking these indices and we are creating a new data tree path. It needs to be a logic here because you will see afterwards that we need to manage our data tree structure. So in this case, again, again, we are just coming back. So first of first one, we are taking uh, so we are taking all the paths that are created from the input and the second number is uh, uh, in this our indices, in this case, 
zero as well. And that's why this list uh, of our series is placed in this path. But let's go to more complex example. So in this, in this case, we have again uh, as an input uh, just one in item, zero, step one. But you will see as a count, we have two, three different items. So we have two, number two, three, and five. So again, it's the same process. So first, we are checking, OK, we are having everything in the zero branches. So that's why we are taking the first one, which is zero. And afterwards, we are going to indices. So that's, that's why we are going to have a zero. So that's why uh, so we are going to use this all the zero. So that's why we are going to use as a start zero, as a step zero, uh, series one, sorry, as, as a count, we are going to use two. So that's why in the first data tree, we have just zero and one. And in this way, we're going to the next one. So we are going to the next one. So again, we have as a start zero, step one, and the count, it will be three. So we are generating three numbers. But you will see that we are taking now the, as a data tree, we are taking the indices for the next one. So we are taking this one to the next one, and this way was created new data tree. And now we are going to the third one, and the same way we have zero semicolon two, two, because in the count number, you will see that indices is, uh, we are taking from the uh, number two. So that's why we have uh, five elements. So zero, one, two, three, and four. So this is how our series component in this case works. And the last one type of components is a list to tree. But in this case, we are going to use a series component again that actually has this function as well. So on the left side, you will see that we have input as a data tree structure. So let's go through the process how the data tree, like a path, is created. So here we have zero semicolon zero. So this is where our like a basic data tree. So we need to start with that one. So actually we are taking that one into, uh, into our path creation. And you will see that afterwards we are creating, we have created two because of the indices. You will see that we have the, in this path zero and one. So that's why we have created a new level. So previously this indices was like an index of our item, but now it will be our path, number of path. So that's why from the zero semicolon zero, we have two uh, items. So that's why we have created two data trees. And now we are going to use that data trees like, okay, we're starting from zero. We have step one and we are generating two numbers. So that's why we have generated zero one and one and two. Okay, so we go to the next one. And again, here we have zero semicolon one as a, our basic tree. So we are going to keep this uh, data tree structure. And now uh, we are adding new level and again, based on our indices. So here we are adding zero, one, and two. So we are creating three more branches. And again, z we are starting from zero, one, one, two, and two, three. And if we go to the last one, so again, here we have, we are going to take the zero semicolon two uh, to our data tree creation and based on our number of index indices. So we are creating this data tree, zero semicolon two, zero, one, two, and three. And based on these numbers, so actually we are starting, okay, first with the zero in the first list. Afterwards, in the second list, we're starting numbers with the one, uh, the uh, third one with the two and the fourth one with the third one. Okay, I hope that is really understandable and we can just keep that list to uh, tree structure and we are going to next component, which is really uh, useful. It's called partition list. So actually from the list here, uh, when you hover over the list input, so it's a list as a list and you hover over chunks, chunks, it will be like a portion of a list. So actually it will be presented as a data tree. So here is the example. Here we have a list that is presented in the zero semicolon zero. It's one of the type of the path. So actually here we are going to uh, some divide our data tree and divide three by three size. So maximum, 
numbers in the data tree structure will be free. So let's, let's do, take a look how it works. So first of all, we have zero semicolon zero, our basic data. So we are going to take this one. And now we are taking this zero because this is our like a first list. So we are grouping all these three items in the first list. The next one, we're going to next three elements. So it will be like a, another, uh, another list. So that's why we are taking zero semicolon zero, but we are taking this number one to our data tree. If we go to the next one, so again, we have two numbers, uh, like a next portion of three items, and we are creating zero semicolon zero and two. And of course, we are going to the last one. So it will be just one element. So we are going to keep that it, because we, we just said that it will be maximum of three uh, items in one list. So here, again, we are taking this three and we are creating zero semicolon, zero semicolon three data tree structure. Let's go to Grasshopper and I show you how it works in practice. I have my Grasshopper file. Let's, do, let's check what kind of data I have here. Let's look at the param viewer. So you will see that we have hundreds of items. Hundreds of items, all, all, all of them are placed in the one branch. You will see that there are specific data because there's te first 10 numbers are zero, next 10 numbers are 10, and then going so on. So let's change that and let's divide this list. We have hundreds of elements. Uh, so we are going to partition list, but divide like 10 elements in every, in every list. So instead of having one list, so I'm going to divide this list by 10. So in this way, I'm going to create 10 branches. So you will see that here, if we're going to connect param viewer and we are connect them. So instead of having just one branch as it was here before, I have created, I have divided that into 10. And, and I showed you before, we have zero semicolon zero, one, two, and going and going in this, this level. So really useful when we are going to change, of course. So let's change to five. So you will see that we have zero semicolon zero, five first element. We are going to next five elements will be in the second list and going and going so. So you will see that there is a data can be created in the manual in the automatic way. One thing that you should take from this lesson is that Grasshopper components automatically generates data tree. And we, we should be aware of that because every time when we get some, make some manipulations, some components, as I showed you, generates a new list. That's why sometimes when you're not familiar with components, it's really wise to just hover or mouse over the component and see if it's right, like a planes as a list or numbers as a list. It will indicate you if they're again generating new data tree level. Because if still, if we are just go standing on the same level, so we are going to add some zeros to that. And these zeros are not a garbage. So you will see here on this example I showed you before that we have added new 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 level of data and it's really important to manage our complex uh, tree structure and of course we are going to make a lot of examples on that and speaking about examples it's time for a new exercise it will be more about data tree here in the exercise 080202 here is a panel with a data so please use that panel uh, you can take this data, which you'll place in this planner to solve this exercise. So good luck and see you in the next video, which will be more about data tree structure. If you like this video and you think it's practical, give it a thumb up. If you know someone who still struggles with grasshopper data trees, please share it. Maybe this video will change the way of working for someone. Now I invite you to grasshopperfundamentals.com where you can register for the next edition and get the best offer from me. See you on the learning platform. Have a good one.